Hey there, this is part two of the VPN site to site series. And what we're going to do right away is that we're actually going to jump into our client machine here and demonstrate that we actually have a, a properly configured uh, a VPN setting. So we're going to go on this machine and we're going to go out to the internet. I have a Kali machine here and we're going to open up the internet. and jump on over to a website. All right, so obviously we are we have a uh, network access out to the internet. Let's look at a little bit of the configurations that are happening on our, our client machine and do a, do a ping between uh, networks. My IP address on this machine is 5.15. Let's go over to our Ubuntu machine here. And look at our IP address here. We've got a 1.100. Okay, let's jump over to our Kali machine and we're going to ping this machine. Awesome. So we are on a this network here, and we were able to ping a machine on a completely different network. Let's see if we can ping uh, Google's Google's DNS. And as you can see, we've got some ICMP packets that are um, coming back to us. And just so that we are confident in our settings. Let's go over to our Ubuntu machine and let's ping the, the Kali machine that we have. And we get some packets back from this. Great. At this point, we have now seen that we can actually send ICMP packets between different networks. And we have also seen that we have a a machine in a completely different network accessing the internet over over VPN and those packets uh, traversing and going back and forth. Let's go ahead and actually look at the VPN configurations on both PFSense machines. Let's head on over to our client machine on this side and begin setting up site-to-site -site VPN on our PFSense router. We're going to access our PFSense machine. And we're going to go head on over to our VPN and go down to IPsec. Okay, so in a site to site VPN, we have two very important pieces we have phase one and we have phase two. And if you want to think about it, the way that these two things work together is phase one is sort of the bridge between the, the two machines, okay? And then phase two is going to be how are we going across that bridge to get to the other side, okay? So in your, in your IPsec, we're going to uh, add a phase one. So we'll go ahead and add phase one. And I'm going to go into my configurations here, and we're going to talk a little bit about what I have set up here. So this is a very, what we got is a very uh, basic configuration. So I'm even going with the IKE v1, uh, Internet Protocol, I've got IPv4. Now remember that we're on the site A, which is the left side in our, in our picture, and the interface that we're going to be connecting from is our WAN. Uh, I'm going to jump over very quickly. So let's remember this IP address here, uh, 16.20. Looking at where we have 16.20, we're currently on this PFSense machine, and the remote destination is 16.20, which is the IP address 
on uh, the external facing interface right here. So 16.20. Okay. So keeping that in mind, we're working on this machine and we're dealing with 16.20. And there's the remote gateway. So we're punching things over there. I have put a description in there. Um, I've stuck with IKE V1, which gives me the ability to have uh, aggressive over main. There is a, a little bit more security involved with main, um, but right now we're just doing the default. Now, what you can see here is that I actually have a, a very a plain text uh, key here. If you're building your own VPN, just click generate a new key, uh, and you'll get a complicated string, and that is the is the best choice to have between these two things. But right now I'm building a, a lab environment where I'm just trying to get it up there so we can we can look at, at it and see it. Uh, but you do need to remember what the pre-shared key is. So in this case, it's this word here. Uh, all of the configurations, by the way, that you're setting up in, in here, you need to remember these things so that it can be the exact same on the other side. The only difference would be that this IP address would change. It would be whatever the address is right here. So in this case, it would be 16.10, but it would be on the other side of the PSN. So let's go over here, keep going down. Uh, we've got my key there. I left this as default, but it would be up, completely up to you if you want to change that. Just make sure that both sides have the, the same encryption algorithm. Leave that as default, and we're going down default and then save. Let's go over to the other side and uh, do, a, do a quick comparison. So we're, we did phase one on this machine here. We're gonna go over and do phase one on this machine here. And remember, the remote gateway is gonna be changed from 16.20, but we're gonna be using 16.10 now. Okay, let's head on over to this machine. Here we are at the PFSense machine on site uh, B, and we have our, our phase one. Everything is exactly the same as the phase one on the other side. The only difference is that we've changed where the remote gateway is. Everything else is gonna be exactly the same. Head on down here, save it, and you are done with phase one. I want to go over to the the other side to site A, and I want to look at the configurations for phase two. So once you've got the phase one complete, uh, you're going to go in, and there's going to be an, an option to click to add phase two. So go ahead and click that, and then we're going to go in here, and it'll automatically put you into this configuration here. Um, now remember, this is this site A is the network that wants to connect with site B and also be able to access the internet. So the local network is going to be our LAN subnet. So everything on the LAN um, is the local network. Um, the remote network, though, is where we see something unique and where we have we set it to network. And we have it set up as this, so 0.0.0.0, uh, 0 and it's basically it's saying that we're just, we just want to sort of blast everything over to this remote side, um, keeping our phase two proposal. We need to, uh, this was default, this is default. It does come with this uh, selected as well, but I, I unselected it because I wanted it to be exactly the same as phase one. Um, that one's the same. Remember, you need to make sure that these things are the same as phase one. Save it and go over to uh, site B and we're gonna open up or create a phase two on that side. Uh, but we are gonna change the way things look. So remember what phase, uh, phase two of site A looks like and it looks like this. Let's head on over to the other machine and take a look at the difference for phase two over here.
so the local network changes. So we got our local network and we got the zeros here. Um, so site A is connecting over with site B, sort of blasting everything over here. Uh, the remote network, this is kind of the one that we're listening for, is the 5.0 network. Remember that is that is this network here. We're dealing with the 5 network here. So it's saying the remote network that's going to be connecting with us is on this particular network. Going down, we look at this AES, SHI, SHA. Uh, all of these things are the same as the phase one and nothing, nothing's changed because we don't need it to get it, getting confused. So go ahead and hit save. And we need to, at this point, we've set up the, the connection. We actually need to uh, configure our firewall now to actually allow traffic to go over this now uh, encrypted tunnel. So let's go ahead. Uh, on the next video, we're going to be covering the firewall rules that we need to put in place.